Play me Dan Dan, sweetie. Dan Dan. Dan Dan. That's it, good girl. I tend to describe myself <laughs> as a um, visually impaired Italian Egyptian Muslim female comedian. I got sick um, during my mother's pregnancy with me and I, uh, and I was diagnosed at nine months old with a blood test from a virus um, and then that caused retinal scarring and retinal damage. I've been involved with GDV since I was 12. Yeah, 12, that's when I started being more involved with services and my posture started to get worse and worse so then um, I had to do cane training and um, and then come to terms of the next stage of my impairment and learn to use a cane and realise that I can't fool myself or I can't fool others to say that I, um, uh, I can walk without a mobility aid when unfortunately I do need to work, have a mobility aid with me. I didn't start becoming more independent travelling on my own until much, much later. Learning how to get to uni with the buses and the tram really efficiently and I, my parents would call me a fair bit, but I would be really quick on the phone with them and be like, I gotta get off, I need my hands to get off the bus. I remember calling a friend from who I used to go on the camps with and she was studying in the city and she said, are you coming to the football? And I said, yes, sir, I'm coming. And then I thought, how am I gonna go and meet her? And I took the tram into the city on my own with my cane. I was 18. Um, and that was probably my first kind of um, voyage of independence or the first big step of independence. And I'm just glad that I was given those opportunities to go on those camps. Because if they didn't, if they weren't involved in my life from 12 up until now, I don't think I would have left the home. I don't think I would have been, have that um, confidence and safety. Because I've been followed a few times. And, um, and I've gone into like a bank or something. And I think guide dogs give you that knowledge of how to be safe. Two weeks ago, I was in a Sydney doing a performance and they put me in a apartment. Um, and I worked out on my own how to get to Coles. I was so proud of myself. I'm in a city where I've got no idea where nothing is. And I'm just there as this like cute little Preston chick that wants to get to Coles to buy wheat bix and milk. Um, so I had some breakfast um, and I found the coals and that, the coals in Darlinghurst is like a multi-level one. So then you got to go down to the basement to get to the dairy product and then you got to go up the escalator to grow the bread products. And I, the minute I walked out with my groceries, I was like, yeah, I'm on my own. And I was like one proud chick. It showed to me that I'm not gonna get hit by a car, I'm gonna be okay. I've done a lot of work and a lot of self-development um, and I guess it was, hey, I'll, like, I'll let myself out because I've got my own keys, I'll go meet my friend in the city. Um, and then that's what young people do and that's what I wanted to do. And, and then I slowly, slowly started to feel more pride in, in getting around on my own, but it took some time.